Hey folks, uh, my name is Brian Davis. I'm a software engineer at the Wikimedia Foundation working on the technical, technical engagement team. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I am here today to talk to you about the Tool Hub project that I've been working on along with Shristi Sethi for about the last five or six months now. And um, I hope you folks will leave the session today with a general understanding of what GAPS Tool Hub is hoping to fill for the movement, how to get information about your own tools into the catalog, and where to look for discussion of future features and how to get involved in our project. So there's a really rich ecosystem of tools built by volunteers and, and staff within the Wikimedia movement to help fill in workflow gaps um, on the wikis. There are thousands of bots, user scripts, web services, gadgets, desktop apps, and phone apps out there. Maybe even one that does the exact thing that you're trying, makes the exact thing that you're trying to do easier or possible. But how do you find them? The Wikitech L discussion that I took the poll quote on the previous slide from inspired user Recordy Samoa to create a fabricator task that collected links to existing parcel solutions. I discovered this task in early 2016 while I was researching ways to help volunteer developers working in what, now, what we now call ToolForge. And uh, I think this was and still is a brilliant idea and a thing that many, many people have asked for over the years. So it led to ToolHub 1.0 goals. Um, our target minimum viable first launch project product for tool hub is uh, focused on on this list of goals on the slide here um, we're working towards a core product that makes collecting and reusing information about tools as open as we can um, rather than creating yet another one-time list of tools we want to make a platform that makes it possible to extend and remix the catalog um, and I think really critical to this openness is, is our choice of, of what's called kind of an API first design. Um, so a web API is just a fancy way of saying that the web application has features that can be used by other software rather than just humans. And in our case, we're hoping that Wikimedia volunteers will be able to build tools that interact with the data that's stored in ToolHub in many ways. So in, uh, Thinking through and designing this, we, we've come up with several personas and use cases that, that we're hoping to support. Um, one of the first ones is, is on wiki editors. Um, we, we want them to be able to search for templates, modules, gadgets, other tools that, make, um, that help make them make specific editing related tasks on wiki easier. We want them to be able to make and view public lists of, of tools in, in a category to learn about things for those kinds of specific tasks. We want editors to be able to contribute information back about the tools that they use. And kind of one of the wish listy features, we'd really like it to be possible to write Lua modules that query tool hub for certain types of tools and then use that information on the wikis in an automated way. Another one of our personas is developers. Um, some of you all, maybe all of you all are developers. We want developers to be able to um, build subsets of of the catalog using the API for their personal use or community use. So basically to build tools outside of Tool Hub that gather Tool Hub's data and show it in some, some different, better, unique way. Um, we'd like developers to be able to develop a gadget or a user script that makes it easy to register a tool in Tool Hub. We'd like developers to learn about the tools that are available in, in different programming languages that they might be good at contributing to. And we want developers to be able to connect with their users, with each other, and with other resources like documentation. A third persona that we have is researchers. Um, and 
We want researchers to be able to use Tool Hub as an entry point to learn about specific tools like bots that are available in the Wikimedia ecosystem. Movement organizers are, are another persona that, that we're hoping to, to reach, um, especially to allow them to search for lists of tools that help with organizing programs or in, and events, um, maybe lists that are created by, by other existing organized groups like Wiki Loves Monuments or Wiki Women in Red. And readers of the wikis are our persona that we care about. We, we want readers to be able to find tools that recommend them new articles, give them new ways to experience Wikimedia content. So, how are we doing this all right now? Well, we've got, we've got a small team and a tech stack working. Um, we're, we're actually running some, some social and technical experiments in, in how we're doing this project. We formed what we're calling an advisory board to help get input from people in key roles throughout the movement during our development. Um, our advisors currently include foundation staff as well as community volunteers. And these folks, they provide us with feedback on our design and implementation ideas. Um, especially in areas where they're subject matter experts. And we use this feedback to help us iterate on collectively thinking about the project from a broader set of perspectives. So we don't end up just making the thing that Brian wants the most, but hopefully we make something that, that all of us can agree is pretty good. Um, we're also trying to leave behind documentation about why certain decisions were made in uh, a form that we call the decision record. Um, I really want Tool Hub to have a life behind beyond the contributions of any single member of the team. And we hope that documenting why we've made some of our technical choices will help future maintainers when, when they need to make their own editorial decisions um, in the project. Um, we're, we're trying to keep the advisors and anyone else who's interested in following along up to date with with what Trishti and I have been working on by uh, producing progress reports each week that, that on Meta and um, also posting a summary of that to a project's development specific mailing list that we have set up. Um, then kind of on the more technical side, we're trying to keep the development environment require, requirements simple. Um, to make it easier for, for people to compute contribute. Um, and we're using some newer technologies that are being adopted in other areas of, of the Wikimedia movement, like Vue.js and container-based deployment tools. Um, a little bit about the dev environment specifically. Uh, it uses Docker Compose to run a set of containers for the Django backend, the Vue frontend, a MariaDB database and elastic set search full text in full text search engine um, and this is set up building on top of of the blubber and pipeline lib configuration tools that are used in in CI um, and will eventually be used for our production deployment as well um, and we've, we've tried to set this up so that we've encapsulated as much as possible within, within the Docker container layer. So on your local machine, you should really only need Docker, Git, and GNU make. And everything else that's needed should be included in the Docker containers with make file targets that automate things like running your tests and regenerating the localization files. Um, all the coding standards that we're using are being enforced with linters and that can be run locally and are also voting uh, when things pass through Jenkins in the CI environment. And this is a cool thing because it means Tracy and I don't need to quibble with each other during code review over little things like formatting. If the linters have passed, then it must be okay. Or we need to go open a bug about adding a new linter because we don't, we don't like what's happening. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the various features 
Oh, and my screenshot isn't showing up on the screen. Interesting. Um, so various features of the project, but the, the start is, is a home page, a landing page um, that's got a search box on it, uh, a paginated display of the cards showing uh, small summaries of, of the tools that, that the, the system knows about now. Um, I think today on the on the demo server that I'll give a link to in a little bit, there are uh, about 762 tools, not about, there are 762 tools currently indexed. Um, and this is in large part thanks to our compatibility with Hayes directory and its tool info JSON standard that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, now I got a one same slide with Scott, cool. Okay, uh, next feature is tool info cards. So these, these are the little summaries about each tool. They have, they have some information there, image, title, description, author, keywords, things like that. The next feature is, is a detail uh, of a tool info. So from the tool info card, there's a, there's a button that you can click for more information, takes you to a, a full page display about the tool where you get a lot more information, potentially, depending on, on how the tool info record has been created. And uh, one of the things you can see maybe here in the screenshot is in the, the, the upper right corner when you're in a right to left, uh, left to right view is, is a view history button, which is another feature. Um, so we have edit history, right? People, people are used to working in MediaWiki this should look kind of familiar. Um, get a detail page about the, the edits that have been made. And, and here you can do things if you have the proper rights, like revert and undo and, and get diffs. Um, faceted search is, is a huge and exciting feature in, for me in Toolhub. Um, so users can search through the tools using freeform text uh, search terms and then refine those searches by selecting common values from the match documents. Um, those common values are, are things called facets. Um, they're, they're sort of search navigation that you've probably seen on e-commerce sites where there's like maybe a list of departments or sizes or colors shown along with your search results and you can click on them to, to refine your search and include only things with that particular attribute value. Uh, and another feature that, that we have is, is tool registration. We need to get data into this system. So there, there's uh, interactive edit forms that allow you to, to create a new tool document uh, initially and uh, and then go on and, and edit it to, to get that sort of edit history that, that we've seen in the previous feature. You can also get your tool info data into Tool Hub using externally hosted tool info JSON files. Um, and so then in our user interface, and user interface screenshot here is shown in, in Hebrew to show you that, that we have some right to left support working in the system. Um, so if you host on Toolforge or in your Git repository or wherever your external tool is hosted, if you host a, a JSON data file conforming to a, a particular format, um, you can then come to, to Toolhub, tell us where that URL is, and the system will go out and, and call your URL and, and bring that data in. Um, that tool info JSON standard is, is something that was started by Hay or Husky, depending on whether you know him from, from content wikis or the development side of the world, um, with his tools directory project. Um, the Hayes directory was an awesome innovation for the tools community that came out of discussions at Wikimania in 2014. And uh, when James Hare and I we're, we're working on the, the initial documentation design for, for Tool Hub. We made a very deliberate decision to start from Hayes standard and build on it in a backwards compatible way. Um, 
This helps Tool Hub by providing useful data even before we've launched the product for public use. And we think this helps the community by, by showing that, that we can build on and extend the things that each of us make. Um, more features that are in the UI. There's, there's uh, some status pages to show you what's going on with the web crawler. And detail screens of, of those particular crawls so that you can see which URLs were crawled and whether they ended up in a completely good green state or some, some sort of intermediate failure state. Um, and you can, when you're looking at this view, you can drill down into the, the what happened with a particular URL, especially if it's erroring out so that you can see what the system saw. If the, the file was a 404 or if it was badly formatted or something else happened. And we have uh, an audit log stream. Um, similar kind of to special logs and special recent changes in, in the MediaWiki software kind of combined into one list of actions taken. And um, we're, we're working on adding more features to this that will uh, eventually allow you to filter these logs by date range, by the user that took the action, by the kinds of actions that were taken. 10 minutes steps, Brian. Thank you, Pyretha. I will move a little faster. Um, so API documentation. I, I said API first design. Um, the, the front end is built with JavaScript that talks to the back end APIs. And built into the front end, we have a documentation browser where you can, you can see what the APIs look like, what parameters they expect on the input, what they give on output. And you can even use this little console to do live testing of, of how you might use the API. Um, related to that, there's, there's developer settings um, that allow you to um, create OAuth consumers that, that will then work with Tool Hub. Um, that really kind of wraps up our features. And then active work, we're working on content moderation support things we're working on um, and then we will move on to working on curated lists of tools and finally we hope to add community added information for tools um, in the form of a thing that we're calling annotations so um, the core tool info records will be owned by whoever initially creates them but then there's other information that, that we should allow everyone to, to contribute to. Um, if you want to help us make this all awesome, there's a demo server at toolhub-demo.wmcloud.org that you can check out. Um, our translations are done at translatewiki.net. You can go over there and, and help provide translations that are missing. There's a tool hub tag in Fabricator that you can see our, our existing backlog, and you can add new bugs and ideas. And there's pages on Meta under Tool Hub that you can see to follow our progress reports and other things. And there we go. We got to my credit slide, which means we are now ready to take questions. Aretha, do we have any questions from the community? Oh, that was a great talk. And I have one question was how they can copy it. And I think we covered it in the end. If you want to talk more about it, we can. And I encourage folks to start asking questions on that. Your, your audio broke up a little bit for me, Aretha, when you were saying what question there was to answer. Uh, so someone asked about contributing and how we can help. It's oh, better, yeah. But to be over it towards the end. If you want to talk more, we can. Yeah. Um, contributing the, the, the projects in Garrett, the bugs are tracked in Fabricator. There's a readme that maybe helps you get set up. Um, but I'm BD808 on IRC. Come find me on IRC. Let's talk. Let's chat. Let's let's see how how we can get you involved. I'm definitely interested in getting 
some community members excited about this project and, and helping contribute patches and make, make things better. So I don't think we have any more films, but I love the color. Someone is a very cool model. So and, and they love yours as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me talk today, folks. And I will see you around at the rest of the hackathon.